something I talk to my kids about all the time who are 19 and 25 is that in the next 10 years, 400 to 800 million jobs are going to change. Just sit here and let that sink in for a second. Because having been in these Fortune 50 companies and knowing how they've outsourced all these roles, we've taken out the entire middle class in the United States because we've outsourced it everywhere else. What do you think they're going to do when they can replace you with AI, robotics, automation of some sort? They're going to do whatever they need to bump up the bottom line. And so a key message that I try to talk about as much as I can is this future is coming at you like, like a train that's going 250 miles per hour and is suddenly coming off the rails. And you can choose to let that thing smack you in the face or you can start preparing now because we are the ultimate learning machine and you can start positioning yourself in a way that you can pivot and adapt when that train comes your way. And the other thing I think that was really critical that you brought up is I think so many of us today wear this mask of pretense. We are trying to be something that we are not, and we are living our lives that way. And a lot of it is because we define success based on extrinsic motivations for success, or we want to be like this influencer, or we want to do this, or we want to do that. Instead of focusing on the joys that come from intrinsic drivers and really knowing yourself and being happy with who you are and excelling and doing the thing that you were put here on earth to do that no one else can do. And when you're trying to focus so much on these extrinsic motivations and you're not looking at the intrinsic value system of the purpose that you have in life, you have this huge chasm in your life, which is causing so many people out there to experience loneliness and hopelessness. And this is fundamentally why I started this whole podcast uh, was to help people see things in a different way. So I'm so glad that you brought that up. Sorry myself for going on a tangent, but people need to realize that you look at Serena Williams, best tennis player, maybe on the history of the earth. Has she had mental health issues? Yes. Has Alicia Keys had mental health issues? Yes. Has Matthew McConaughey had mental issues? Yes. Has Matthew Perry had mental health issues? Yes. Has Jennifer Aniston? But you can, the list goes on and on. Everyone has their moments of self-doubt. But the key secret to life, I think, is truly getting inside your head, getting to know who you are, and falling in love with that person. I could not agree more. It's funny because I am definitely aggressive in my approach when it comes to work and business. And I don't take no for an answer for things. I will figure it out until I come up with a solution, evolve or die. I'm like, AI is taking over. I'm not going to fight AI. I'm one person. I'm going to fight with it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to adapt. And so part of me is like that. And then on the other personal side, I'm very, obviously, I have sensitivity to mental health and everything. So I'm all about trying to be, understand situations and face them less aggressively. So it's an interesting paradox, but I agree with everything you said. I think that those are definitely lessons to be had. And the world is going to evolve. The world is going to grow. It's going to faster and faster. Instead of sitting back and looking at it and being like, cool, I'm going to get replaced. Figure out how to add value in a different way. Use these challenges as advantages, right? For me, I'm thinking like AI is going to replace a lot of things and it's going to replace meal plans. It's going to replace a lot of these. And that's not necessarily the business I'm in, but it is in a sense because it's food. And I'm like, well, how do I leverage AI to be able to duplicate myself and scale things? I'm only one person. I can't necessarily serve people food in other countries like a musician can upload a song on spotify how do i use ai to be able to feel like people have access to me in a way that can think like me and give recipe like, can i create an ai personal chef for you can i manage your meal plans that way through my thinking through data input like all these really interesting things with that technology that i can do they couldn't do before as much as people are afraid of it the thing about ai is it's never going to replace creativity that's the thing i don't see replacing creativity yes it will take your idea and pour gasoline on the fire sure in that sense but there's no way i'm ever going to let ai replace the way i think creatively or the things that i come up with like ai is you're not going to say come up with a restaurant and it's going to be like yes you're going to do a mixtape inspired by your it's just not going to work it's not going to happen there has to be 
creativity on the other side. There has to be people that get creative on how to use it as well. So in that sense, I'm not worried. And I, I don't think anyone should be worried aside from the fact that if they think that their entire worth is knowing how to write and now AI can replace that, like they should realize their full potential and realize that they're much more than that, that they add more value than just a task. Everyone's human. Humans add layers of things that technology can't, right? And ultimately it's like the restaurant example of the perfect restaurant with all the budget. If there isn't the soul and the story and the context around it, it's just a product. And it's like that AI is going to give you a product and it's going to help you get a product, which is great. But it's up to you to really figure out how to tell the story and, and give it context.